And now, to fill us in with more detailed history of Fort Kochog, is Mr. Jim Grathwell. I'm Jim Grathwell, and I'm coming to you from the Visitor Center at Downs Farm Preserve in Kochog, New York, on the North Fork of Long Island. At Downs Farm Preserve is located Fort Kochog, and Fort Kochog is the site of the fort at which the Korchog Indians lived back in the 1500 and 1600s and the early 1700s. Believe it or not, there were Indians here on Downs this Creek uh, as many as 6,000 years ago. So they were here long before the English arrived in 1640. And the Korchog Indian tribe covered the whole North Fork of Long Island from Orient Point to Wading River. And they were one of the 13 tribes of the uh, Algonquin Nation, which was part of the Delaware Nation along the whole east coast of, of uh, the United States. But one of the most important things about Fort Korchog is that it really was the Fort Knox of the Indian nations back during the 1600 and 1700s because the Korchog Indians were known for the wampum that they made. Their wampum was of such high caliber that it was used by Indians from as far south as North Carolina to as far north as Maine. And there was also trading between the Korchog Indians and the Dutch and to a lesser degree the English. And even though we think of Downs's Creek today as a relatively shallow little creek, a couple of hundred years ago it was quite a waterway and the Dutch actually sailed their ships up Downs's Creek to trade with the Korchogs. And they also you, the Dutch, as well as the English, used wampum too because in the early days of the settlement neither the English nor the Dutch government let the settlers here use their own coinage, so they too used the wampum. And I guess the sad part of the story is that once the English arrived in 1640, they really led very quickly to the downfall of the Korchog Indians. First of all, they took over their land and pushed them onto reservations. One was initially on Nassau Point, what we call uh, Nassau Point today, it was called Hog Neck back then. And then shortly after that, they were pushed a little further east to what we still call Indian Neck. But it was primarily the European diseases that the English brought that were the downfall of the Korchog Indians. So let's come a little further, closer to our time, because it was about 1698, I believe, that there was a census locally, and it listed 48 Korchog Indians, and that really was the end of the Korchogs. So the property we're talking about, which has been, or had been, in the Downs family for hundreds of years, from the early 1800s, I believe, until the mid-1900s, uh, was some of the richest prime farmland on the East End. And I remember, because I was born and brought up in Kachog, I remember the last Downses that owned the property, John Downs and his wife Edna. Uh, John and Edna died about 1954-55 and their farm was sold by their heirs to the Baxter family. And the Baxters were great stewards of the land until about in 1988. And uh, I remember hearing a rumor that the Baxters were going to sell this land for development. And all told, there are approximately 150 acres of pristine farmland, wetlands along the creek, and woodlands. And like everybody else, I 
thought it would be an absolute crime if we had up to probably 50 McMansions on this magnificent piece of property. So I hosted a luncheon at what was then the Galley Ho restaurant in New Suffolk with Bill Baxter, whose family owned the property, Ralph Selecki, who I'll mention in a moment, who did a lot of the original archaeological uh, studies here at Fort Korchog, and Frank Murphy, who was the supervisor of South Old Town at that time, John Halsey, still the president of the Mechanic Land Trust, and several other people. Uh, Myra Case was another one who had put the, or helped put the Fort Korchog site on the National Register of Historic Places back in the 70s as a bicentennial project. And we all agreed, Mr. Baxter too, that we really should do everything possible to preserve this land. So believe it or not, it took 10 years. It wasn't until 1998 that we got all the eggs in line because South Old Town had committed a million dollars Suffolk County had committed two million, but they backed out when the real estate market took a dip. So we had money from New York State, a small amount from Suffolk County, from the Kutchog New Suffolk Historical Council, and a private investor, Russ McCall. And this great effort resulted in 1998 of coming to the figure uh, that Mr. Baxter and his family accepted. And from then on, we made every effort to develop, uh, I don't like that word, pardon me, but to preserve the land and, yes, to uh, install new trails, all at the time preserving the site of Fort Korchog. It's on the west side of Danza's Creek, and it was pretty much overgrown, but Ralph Selecki has taken us on tours of the site many times, and you can still see the mounds where the stockades of the fort were located. The Indians actually lived outside the fort. It was primarily for defense because the Pequot Indians from Connecticut would come across the sound and raid the Korchogs. But uh, the fort was probably in use for only several hundred years before the Indian, the Korchog Indians faded away. And I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but Kachog gets its name from the Korchogs. And in the Indian language, Korchog meant principal place. On the wall behind me, you have seen or do see the sign that says the Ralph Selecki Visitor Center at Fort Korchog. And it was in November 2006 that uh, Ralph and his wife Rose came out. Then Ralph comes fairly often, but came out and we had a special day to dedicate the visitor center to Ralph Selecki. And Ralph is really the godfather of Fort Korchog because it was back when he was a teenager and lived at his family's summer home on Manor Hill that he came down to the Downs Farm, which is obviously less than a quarter of a mile away, and with Mr. Downs' permission, started digging in the area where it had always been a local rumor that this fort was located. And Ralph really is the one, over the years, with some of his students from Columbia, who did a lot of the archaeological studies. Uh, he wrote the definitive story of Fort Korchog and has taken, to this day, great interest in preserving it and especially helping us inform people of what who the Korchogs were. I especially thank all the people who have been involved, especially the Peconic Land Trust, because they played a key role in bringing all the parties together to make this possible. So I encourage anyone who might see this presentation to get involved. Thank you. Mm -hmm.